We're going to um, we're going to get started in a moment. Um, hopefully, you've had a chance to look through the um, pre work, and um, if we've got time, we'll go through that at the end. Um, but again, it's going to dive straight in with some very interesting positions, which will hopefully help you improve your chess and whet your appetite to learn a bit more about king and pawn in games. So over to you, Glenn. Right. Well, uh, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Glenn Fair, and indeed. Uh, I find in games uh, fascinating. When, when we're quite young, we what tends to happen is we we're playing a long game, and uh, you know the game has gone on a bit, and so on and so forth. And then we get to a position with very little material on the board, and we have a tendency to accelerate because we're a little bit tired. Maybe we're a bit concerned about what's going on with our clock. There's not much on the board, so what is there to think about? Let's just get on with it. And then you play, you play it quickly. And then you realise, actually, afterwards that uh, you can make mistakes. So one of the things to do sometimes after we've made those mistakes is look through them afterwards and see if we can learn from them. And here's an exa example. Can you all see the, uh, the board, which I've got here? Yeah. Is a... Um, Game pawn ending where black's got three pawns and white's got two. So black's a pawn up, but he's got a broken pawn structure. And this is an example I took from the book which illustrates this point that uh, black had a look round, couldn't see anything. Enough, a draw is, you know, sometimes a reasonable result with black, but he could have done better. Now, if you have this position in an actual game and you think it through quickly, it's quite possible that you make the same conclusion as that player there, that there's nothing to do in here, and that the draw is the best I can do, and I'm not going to waste my time, or, you know, draw from play football or something. So, yeah, that might be a possibility. But if we've got an exercise, um, sometimes we can spend a little bit of time, so I can't see it at first, but I'm going to keep going, keep going, I'll work it out and find it. And that way we can sometimes find resources which are quite well hidden. So how can Black win this position? Well, if black moves his king, something like this, well, white goes here, comes back, black comes there, and we come here, and we've not made very much progress. So that can't be the solution. But there's an interesting idea, is to, is to give back the pawn here. Pawn check. If white um, moves to the side, then that's a, quite an easy win, this position, because uh, you might all recognise it's a type of position where a king well placed to support it. It's in a bad situation. You know, probably win the pawn. That's any problem. The pawn check white recaptures. And no doubt the person who black thought of this position in his mind and he decided, oh, well, after king e5, king e3, I'm not getting anywhere. And that's quite right. But there is an interesting point here. Is that you don't have to go to e5, you can go to c5. And this is the point that the player would like to miss. And what's the big deal with that? And now white's got two options that make any sense. And that's one is to go king c3, and one is to go king e3. So if white goes king c3, if you like, creating a sort of a face off with the other king, then black's got this little move e5. And this illustrates a number of aspects of pawn endings. Black's got this pawn move in reserve, which is quite useful. So it's like a joker card, which he plays at the right moment. And at this point, it means that this face-off suddenly becomes favourable for, uh, for Black. Now, this face-off um, has got various names. Um, it's a sort of zugzwang, which is a, like a global name for a position where one person who has to move has to make a move he doesn't really want to. But in king on endings, we sometimes call this the opposition. And this is a term that you may have come across. And you may also have seen a number of examples in the material that was sent to you by uh, Sarah and Alex, uh, as well as by myself. And it basically means that white, to play, has to give ground. So if he goes here, the black's going to invade with king d4 and make pawns. But in fact, um, the king d3 isn't much better. Because actually... I'm sorry to interrupt you. I think you've got some background noise going on, if you could have mentioned it in the chat. It's, it wasn't happening before. I don't know. Let's stop now. But maybe that's because you stopped talking. I don't know if it's my microphone. Um, I shouldn't have too much background noise going on. I'm in a quiet environment. 
Oh, that's my computer. Yeah, it didn't happen when we spoke um, prior to this, but it is happening when you speak now. I don't know if it's possible to change the settings. If not, it isn't that bad. Uh, I'm not sure what that is actually. Uh, um, frankly, uh, that's a problem which I, I've not come across before. So it's, okay, don't worry, just carry on. I think it's, I think it's all right. Yeah. So, in a position such as this, that King D3 can be four. Um, you may already have come across such positions in your own personal experience. The white gradually wriggles around and black makes more and more progress. So it doesn't really matter uh, which square you go to. It, it's almost like it's inevitable that black's going to uh, pick off the uh, pick off the uh, deep. In fact, pick off the deep one as well. So the temporary pawn sacrifice enables black to come in. So if we go back to that position, black can win with d4 takes. So he gains the opposition because he has this extra move with pawn, which is very useful. And this is what uh, the player with, with white missed. So that illustrates the points of opposition the extra move, but also the practical aspects of the position. Sometimes when we're playing again uh, uh, at the board, we don't see all the possibilities. So that means that we shouldn't play too quickly. Out of and even though there are not very many pieces on the board, sometimes there are hidden secrets that might uh, confuse you a little bit if you uh, don't take your time. So when we get to board endings, take your time, just like we would in a middle game position where there are lots of pieces. Because the slightest uh, mistake, the slightest oversight in a, in a position you point out, can immediately have a decisive effect on the result of the game, half point or a point. In the middle game, make a slight oversight. You might be able to come back with a bit of counterplay, or, or you might be able to confuse your opponent. But important, you make a, a, a mistake because you're, you're too sloppy, too quick, you might not get a chance to. to uh, to get back because the result is moving very quickly. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to go to the next example. And there's another example. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Right, okay. So there's this one uh, as well. And They're here going I'm... to have a go at this one and they can write their answers privately to us in the chat. Okay, that sounds like a good idea. And that's one of the interesting aspects of, of having the line online. So why not, why not uh, try and have a go at this? Imagine that you have the black pieces in this position. And as you can see with the text, you must choose your next move carefully. And that's not something you can do if you're just playing instantly. Because some young fellows, they, they tend to accelerate and get faster and faster as the game comes along. And it's almost like they're playing a bit scared when it's the point. And here again, if you make a, a, a wrong step, it, it might cost you half a point. So think about your next move carefully. Sometimes it's worth thinking about positions that are not, not spectacular. When you're doing little tactics and combinations on the, uh, uh, you know, in a book or on, online, you know, you can sometimes uh, find really pretty moves and stuff like this. But sometimes the move that we have to play is just a straightforward, almost nondescript, nothing special move, but if it's the best move, it's worth trying to find. Yeah, so write your answers privately um, to me in the chat. And Glenn, would you be able to just fiddle with your microphone check if it's plugged in properly? Because it is making um, a bit of an annoying noise. <laughs> yeah, the problem is I've changed my computer, so it might be uh, a problem. It was fine it... before we started when we were chatting, and then it stopped when you went for a break before we started. But, um, let me have a think about what that could be. It doesn't matter if not. But one of um, somebody mentioned maybe it's came unplugged or something. Maybe it just needs to be pushed in a bit. I've got this uh, automatic uh, adjust adjusting of uh, uh, automatically uh, taking away the background noise. Good answers coming through on that. 
give you give you a few minutes to work this out and then um i'll read the answers to glenn and he can go for it right so what do i do in the meantime do we go on to the next example and we come back to this or and um, i'll just want i'll call out the answers in a moment and then we can go through it so um i have some comments here then so we've got um um first answer someone said king h7 um and then we had king f6 it should lead to a draw then we had h5 so a lot of variety here right okay there's a lot of variety. so let's let's see what um and h5 check as well so they're, they're the answers we've had through well, h5 check king f6 and king h7 well one of those moves is good and the other two are not so good <laughs> uh, that's what yeah. it should be so should be so easy but they're not they're so complicated there's so few that pieces is. but that you have to be so that Sarah's point is, is perfectly right. There's not much on the board, and yet we can you know, easily go wrong. Now, the, the correct move actually is king f6. So bravo to those who thought of king f6. And this means that if white now goes king h5, seemingly to make progress, you can come back with king here. Now the white king doesn't really have any way forward, no invasion into the camp. So, you know, he's got to come back, uh, and then, he, and then he, we, we go around in circles, and, and a draw could be the result. And if we then look at six move, in here, which is that I'm not really making any progress, I've got no pass moves, I'm going to come back. And again, the position is that's why it's blocked. But the interesting thing is that players, uh, if they're alternative now king h7, the advantage of king h7 is that you're keeping well uh, in contact with your h4, but the disadvantage is it allows white to make a significant progress here. So after king f5, king seven, h4, king here, h4. No, no, we've noticed we've got one of these cases of um, opposition with uh, the king's facing off, and now black has to give to red. Goes king here, king here. And we're going to get black's going to get out of it. This is h4. Not convinced by that, you check it out with yourself, uh, with yourself later, and you'll see that that loses the h4. Again, black didn't play king f6. Black did h5 too. And I noticed that. Uh, at least one of you suggested it's right. And that looks like such a natural move. I can understand you suggesting that. But the solution is actually, um, white solution, is, 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 is exactly like in the previous example. So sometimes we can apply an idea from one position to another one. So after king h4, for instance, king h6, we've got the same situation where the white king's got to go back. There's nothing, there's nothing doing. But he could go king f4. And now what's black doing? King F6 to sort of get the opposition. Unfortunately, White's got this reserve temper. So that's one thing to watch out for. Maybe you overlook that point. You suggested H5 check for the chap who suggested that. The point is, um, when you've got the opposition with the king's facing off, always be taken into account reserve tempo in the position because that can swing it the other way. And now Black's got to give ground and he uses his H1. And this is, this is bad news for Black. Black lost the game in the, in the actual game. So that's an example. So, you know, mind, um, sorry to interrupt. Do you mind um, coming back? Because it has got quite bad. Um, I can go on to the next question. And then maybe if you come back into the Zoom, it might um, help the situation because people are saying they can't hear you. Um, right. Would that be all right? I'll, I'll just, I've got all the positions on each other. So I'll bring up the next one and get the children to have a go at that. Um, that's okay. Sorry, everyone, just a few technical problems, but we'll be, we'll be fine in a minute. So let, I'm just going to share my screen now um, and let's have a look. Um, so this is the one that Glenn's just been through. I'm going to give you the next position here. Now, this is about triangulation, and this is very important in chess. So hopefully you know your triangulation. So can you work out, and I don't just want one move. I need the whole sequence, please. So white to play, how does white win? I'm going to come back in. So tell me in the chat how you'd win this, but obviously one move isn't enough. And I just need to 
Okay, um, I can uh, hear everyone. Can they hear me now? Yeah, and I do. So far, we haven't got any background noise, so that's brilliant. Um, they're just having a go at the triangulation question. Yeah, that's brilliant, Glenn. Um, okay. Um, so, given them the position to have a go at, um, and some answers coming through, which is good. Um, and we can't see you then as well. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so that's good. Uh, right, that's uh, great. I'm just uh, going to. Do it. So you're on the triangulation question, and now I have to get my video sorted. Yeah, write the black moves as well, please. So this is one of those positions that is very important to know, and it might look easy, but it's not easy. So you need to know your triangulation. You have to form a triangle with the king. And please write as much detail as possible. I'm just looking at the solutions now. Some, some good answers here. I'll, I'll read them out to you then. <laughs> Maybe we'll go through in a moment. So, um, I'll just give a few people a couple more minutes because they still might still be thinking about it. And Theo has even quoted the game. I don't even know what game this is, but he says well, it's a game. Yeah. 19-12. <laughs> okay. So make sure you can win this position. It's a really important thing to know. Okay, so let's have a look at the answers here that we've got that have come through. So this is a very important concept of triangulation. And I see quite a few of you've got this right. So King D5, King C8. Now, in this position, well, you might think it would be easy. You could just move the king forward, but you need to get this position, or it's high Glenn. Um, you need to get this position um, where um, whoever to move is different. So, I mean, Glenn, you can carry on um, now that you're back if you want to just explain this. That's fine. Okay. Well, you know, the thing is, is that, uh, you know, we would like to go King D6 or something like this at this point. But if we go King D6, then Black um, can meet it with King D8. And if you like, the, Black's got the favourable opposition at this time, because if C7 check, you can go through this in your mind. King C8, King C6. Um, it's Black to move, but he hasn't got any moves, so it's it's stalemate. So that's not working. But if we imagine that situation with the king on d6, the king on d8, um, with black to move, then, then white would get a favourable version of the opposition. So you can imagine uh, that scenario. And that's what we're trying to head for uh, in, in our thinking. So white's going to do a little bit of manoeuvring on squares, which are not far from the action, but um, we can profit from the fact that we've got bags of room all around our king and the other guy hasn't. Because the other guy's got the back rank, so he can't go to the ninth rank because it doesn't exist. And also he's got the b7 and d7 squares, which are out of it. So why can just manoeuvre around? So king c4, for instance, or king d4, either of them actually works. In this position, black dan go to c7, because then white goes king c5, with immediately um, being able to evade next move because it's a sort of sub swing into b6 so black goes king d8 and black goes well i, I can go king d8 because white can't play king d6 but black white can now go sideways with king c4 <laughs> uh, just one one square sideways <laughs> goes back it doesn't again one doesn't want to go to c c7 because king c5 uh, immediately breaks through so king c8 and now white goes king d5 
And you think, well, hold on a second, we, we've been there a minute ago, what, what are we achieving? Well, actually, we've spent three tempi to, we've spent a couple of tempi, we've got this little manoeuvre, king d5, king d4, king c4, king d5, a little triangle, and that's why it's called triangulation. And now black has to move. He doesn't want to move, but he's got to move. Again, king c7 loses to king c5. And now, because now black, if he moves his king, then king b6, and you're in, you can win the a pawn and no doubt the game. And the other point, yeah, Exactly. And then the other point is, if black goes now, it goes king, D, uh, king g8. Or if black goes king b8, now white goes king d6. King c8, black has to move. That's one of the laws of chess. And now you can play c7. And now you're making very good progress. But just when you think it's all over, you've got to be a bit careful. So king goes to b7, and now white goes king d7. And this is a point where sometimes the young players make a mistake because they think, oh, yeah, I'm winning. Oh, great, I'm going to tell everyone. And now you have to be careful not to promote a queen because it's still made. <laughs> that would be a bit embarrassing after all that hard work. <laughs> it was all over. So in that position, yeah. uh, let's go back to that little position there. So in this position, there's two ways. Either you go to a rook, or the simplest is king c6. Because king c6, black to move, king there, and now you can promote to a queen and mate it two moves. That, that's probably a little bit simpler than promoting to a rook, but I believe that all of you could probably win that with <laughs> against King. No. But you try and find the, the smoothest, most comfortable way, especially in the modern environment where we're playing a lot of games online with a restricted time limit. The important thing is to find the way that's most comfortable to win without having to complicate life. So that little triangulation has occurred in a few games. Um, Somebody apparently quote, quoted a, a game reference. Uh, there are all sorts of very similar positions where it's exactly the same manoeuvre that's required. And you'll find, I found uh, examples of an and of something in almost identical positions. I also had this uh, when I was quite young. I had this in one of my own games. The only problem is my opponent played very, very badly leading up to it, so I didn't get a chance to triangulate. I worked it all out that uh, it fell into this position with, with black to move rather than white to move. But it, it's good to have these little bits of uh, information that we stock in our own personal uh, library of uh, little techniques that enable us to use when we get to a practical game. Imagine you've got a practical game in a rapid or something where you've only got five or ten second increments and you haven't got a great deal amount of time on the clock. If you've seen that sort of position before, then there's a good chance you'll be able to get the result you want. Whereas if you haven't seen the position before, it sometimes takes a little bit too long to work out. And that's one of the big advantages of having this little personal library up here of uh, information for such pin games. Maybe we should go to the next uh, example now. Okay, yeah, perfect. Okay, well, this is, a, this is a, an interesting game because uh, something very strange happened here. And just before this, I was totally lost and my opponent took it a bit too easy and unfortunately we, we sometimes kick ourselves afterwards but then it's too late so the game continued uh, with back to play back play bishop takes d1 and taking the, the rook and now some young people what they do is they automatically play a move what you do though is you have a think about it. Have I got an alternative to king takes d1? And in fact, there's a, a, a good alternative, d6. And this move is quite interesting because b6 is um, threatening to make a, a queen. I'm, I'm threatening d7, d8 equals queen. And the bishop, even if it moves, it can't stop the advance. The, the fact that there's a pawn on e6 actually helps white because there's no way the bishop can move to stop the pawn advance. So black has to play king f8 to get inside the square of the pawn and now there's no point in advancing the pawn because the black king can soften it up but now white can play king takes d1 so that little intermediate move d6 uh, turn the tables so from a position a little bit earlier where i was in dire straits i'm suddenly got a, a, a very favorable pawn ending and why is it a favorable pawn ending my opponent's got a three to two majority on the queen side which is all very well but um I feel like I can handle that. I've got a king that can cover that. Honestly, I've got in compensation, I've got this big pawn on d6. 
And we call this a passport, but we also look at the pawn on e5 that's protecting its mate, and we call the pawn on d6 a protected passport. Now, a protected passport uh, in a pawn in is quite a big advantage because it ties down the opposing king. Tying down the opposing king means that he can't, he's got to stay within a square of that pawn or he's in trouble. And why can you exploit this to win? Now, I knew if I could get this position, I wasn't going to lose this as white. But I wanted to make sure that I kept things simple. So you can see what happened in the actual game. I advanced uh, my G pawn, and uh, we can cross play the moves out that I played. So my opponent brought his king to D7, and I put my pawn on G5. Again, when I was looking at this position, I was thinking, um, was it really necessary to advance the G pawn? I mean, that's what I did when I looked at the position, and I thought, Maybe it's important to have some extra tempo um, later. So, um, was it essential to push the G pawn? Well, this is it's a really good question. I, I know, I know when, when we were preparing this, the question was asked, and I, I was thinking the same thing that it wasn't totally sure. Sometimes it's very important to keep reserve tempo uh, up your sleeve. In this case, um, although reserve tempo was an interesting idea, I didn't like the idea of my opponent at some point playing f6. And after I captured it to play King takes C7 and getting it past Epon. And along with the three to two majority on the Queen side, I thought this was going to be a bit complicated to work out. So I did verify that I didn't need this reserve tempo. But in many similar situations, keeping the tempo in reserve is a good idea. And that's something to take into account in your own games. Do I need the reserve tempo or do I need to just really put my foot down on the position to make sure my opponent can't break out. So I played g5, deciding the reserve tempo rate wasn't necessary. And now there's no counterplay with the f4 for black. So black just has to wait patiently. Now the problem for black is that in all cases, white can actually invade and create a second weakness. You've heard this expression, second weakness. But a weakness in that, in that sort of a global expression comes in all sorts of um, forms. In this case, the black king is a weakness because he's tied down to the d pawn. So black's weakness is white strength on the d pawn. I need to create a second one because my, my own king can't invade that easily. There's a bit of work to do. So what I need to do is find a way to invade it on, on the queen side. And I, I checked mentally um, is um, that my opponent couldn't actually stop me creating a second threat, or if you like, the second weakness, we tend to globalize it on the green side. So, you know, what can Black do? Um, somebody well, suggested C4. Joseph, um, he suggested C4. That's a possibility. We can look at that if you like, C4. Yeah. So every time, uh, C4 for white, you wanted to play C4 for white. Yeah. Okay, well, the, th the thing about this position is that who is it to move? Yeah, back to move. Well, black's going to play king c6. So let's say black plays king c6. Now, I now white. Um, I, I, I don't want to play anything too complicated. I, I wanted to bring my king up, so I'll play, say, king c2. And let's say black plays king d7. And now white can play king b3. Black plays king c6, you know, black just buying his time, and now white can play c4. So this idea of c4 certainly comes in. Okay, good. And let's have a look at king d7 or something. If black plays b4, then white can invade with king a4. Yeah, this looks good because we're going to be able to take yeah. that. Um, but black can play king b6. And then we don't have a reverse move. Yeah, so so suddenly that isn't so straightforward for for white. So that's the sort of position that I have to be a bit careful with, and that's why you have to be a little bit careful playing uh, c4 um, too too early. Really. That's a nice idea, but yeah, it's the king can stay. Uh, so the king on b6 is covering a5 and stopping the d pawn. And white doesn't have any reserve tempo. And this is the point that Sarah was making. If white had a reserve tempo in that position, then yeah. he could at that point play g5. He could have uh, achieved something quite nice. So that's the sort of thing to, to be a little bit careful with for white. So 
It's, it's an interesting one, this one. Now, somebody's suggesting A4 is a, another point break. In fact, you need, you need to sort of combine the two, I think, to, <laughs> to get the, the right uh, way forward. But it's quite, a, quite an interesting uh, thought. The problem with A4 is that black just leaves the points where they are. And they go keep D7. And, uh, and then suddenly, yeah, it doesn't look um, as if, you know, there's going to be an easy way to, to break through. I don't want black to have a protected passport at the, at the end of the, the score. So that's... Um, 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 jo Glo Joseph's got a question. He said, can we go back to C4, please? Maybe I'll let him speak and ask you the question directly. Is that OK? Yeah, come on. Um, so, let's just... Um, so in which position C4? Um, yeah, so I guess um, we were going... Well, let me just uh, let's make it so you can unmute yourself, Joseph. You can just ask him, uh, Glenn, directly, and then it's easier. I'll, I'll be doing the chessboard, so just let me know. Okay. Right. I was going to say, so C4, right? Um, I think, was it this position? Maybe. Uh, the one where you've got the, yeah, I think it might have been this one. No, further. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's right here. Yeah. No, go back. Yeah. Uh, I think so with the king C2, C4, um, when the, you know, when the king was on B3 and yeah, king c2. And then what was it? It was like king d7 and c4. Yeah. Uh, now c4. I think it does work. Okay, go on. Let's do it. King d7. So, what would you play? Uh, well, here. black's got two moves. He's got b4 or king d7. Uh, yeah, king king d7. B4. Let's, let's look at the two possibilities. Uh, which one do you want to look at first? Uh, b4. Right, b4. Uh, king a4 and then king, b6. Uh, king where? D6. So I was actually thinking, uh, couldn't you go D7, King C7, King A5, and King takes A6, then eventually go King B5? That actually wins. I think you might be right. Yeah. 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 Let's King look at that. Seven. Yeah, I think we found a good idea. Yeah. King A5. King A5 for white, yeah. And then takes, takes. takes. Now if King C6, uh, you can go King A5. Exactly, yeah. So that's that's the point that we, we need you to take into account. So sometimes when we get to a, a position where it looks like the opponent's put up a defence, what do we do? We, we either seek an alternative or we go a bit deeper into the position to see if we can still break the defence. And you're quite right, the white king is better placed. And we notice that the black king, despite um, no longer being tied down in the same way, because there's no longer a d6 point, it's getting out the new idea. This has occurred in a number of the positions that we've looked at um, so far. And if we go back a little bit, if we go back a few moves, keep going, keep going, keep going. If black, if this is from place King D7, for instance, who doesn't play B4, he says, well, I want to keep my fingers handy. Now you've got an interesting way to play. You can take on B5, black recovered, recaptures, and now you play A4. What you're basically doing is um, forcing black to make a decision. Now, king d6 is no good because you take on b5, he recaptures, and now you play d7. So he's no longer inside what we call the square of the d pawn. So he needs to do something with that pawn. If he takes, king takes, king takes, king c6, king a5, and you're out maneuvering him again. In, in a similar way to the variation that you correctly pointed out. So after king d7, uh, king b5, you're picking off his last pawn, and suddenly the queen's arbitrarity has disappeared, and we're down to a three against two, and that's more or less a straightforward way to, to break through. But the key thing is, what happens if black plays b4? So go back a few moves, that's the one. So here we go, c4, good move, king d7, no, no, King D7 takes takes A4, and you might be asking, what happens after B4? And so that was the first move that Sarah wanted to to play because that looks like a big test. Black has got two connected pass pawns, but two connected pass pawns are not that great when the Black King can't give them any support. Yeah, I don't think Kenneth is saying A5. Yeah, and a5 is quite right. So white plays a5, and then he wants to play a6 very shortly afterwards. He's quite right. The point is, you've now got the second weakness. And this is what you wanted to achieve. You've got the 
a pawn and a d pawn, and that's too much for the black king. They're going to overwhelm the black king. The two connected past pawns, very pretty and very good in certain circumstances, but here they, they can't regain. Really so black plays king c6, and white plays a6. And of course, you're stretching the defender. There's only one defender here, there's a king, and uh, it's, he can't stop the a pawn and the d pawn. Yeah, so that's why white wins. But the interesting thing is that White was winning this pawn anyway because he's able to nibble away at the, 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 the uh, majority, the three against two, because the black king can't help out very much. So and what's the conclusion then after c4 then? Well, the black snows. Mm. Yeah, that's the that's the big conclusion. Yeah, but... I can't see any real alternative. King b6 perhaps is, a, is an alternative square, but that, that doesn't change a great deal. I can take on b5 in this case. Black recaptures with the pawn. And now we can play a4. After b4, um, I can still play a5 check, but uh, king c4 might be something. King c4 might be something. But still, you know, it's, 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 it's you've got the same scenario of uh, um, you can't um, do too much about it. Let's go to the next one. So this one worked out very nice, and I swindled my pawn. The next one, I got myself swindled, which wasn't a very good idea. But that is a point, is that even grandmasters go wrong in, in, in end games. And this one, it was the, uh, the play leading up to it didn't go very well. So let's have a look at how this went. So, black played king d7. I was... Yeah, and now white played rook. Well, I can't remember what happens. Can you play the moves, Sarah? I'm, I'm relying on your um, thing because I think it's quite a good way to do it. Yeah. And uh, basically, we've got the pawn ending. And okay, well, then, can we just start at this point? You know, perhaps my judgment was coloured by the fact that I'm a pawn up. My pawns are not great, I accept, but I'm a pawn up. And I've got this possible route king d7, king d6, king c5. And that looks really very interesting. But I underestimated my opponent's capacity here. My opponent now played f4. Well, let's pause for a minute and think about that move then. So my okay. opponent's pulled down and now sacrificing a second pawn. So what does f4 do? Well, it, it's sort of attacking the e5 pawn. Yeah, great. No, yeah, no problem. So, but. I can take on f4, and I'm no longer being attacked, which is what I did. So I took on f4, and now my opponent played e5. And suddenly the black king, which looked so promising a couple of moves ago, doesn't have a route into the white position. Because when white plays e5, we notice that the penetration possibilities of the black king are, are restricted, because white's covering c6 and d6, and so the black king can't pass by them, even from the f6. So any potential route for the black king is going to be on the king's side. Now, something radical has just happened, something has changed, nothing concerning the pawn structure in any game. And when it happens, something dramatic happens, position changes radically, generally we need to take our time, take stock, and work things out again. And what I did in this position was uh, I didn't do this. Also, I, I was so, um, shall we say, frustrated that my position wasn't as easy that I underestimated the danger here. So I lost this position, which a few moves earlier, I was you know, doing very well, probably close to winning. I managed to lose this position because I lost my objectivity. I was still thinking about winning when I should have been trying to say to myself, well, the position has changed quite a bit. Um, what's happened? Now I should reassess what's going on. But it's very easy for me to say it now. But I learned my lesson from this game. So I think it's a good idea to go through our losses and see what went wrong on the board, but also what went wrong with our thinking. Yeah, that's a good point, Glenn, because I do that a lot. Like you're winning a position and then you're suddenly not winning, but you still have in your head that you want to win because you know you were winning. And then you try too hard and you end up losing. And I think that lots of juniors do it as well. Yeah, it is. It's because our emotions take over rather than our uh, bit of common sense. So anyway, this was played on the 1st of January of, of some years. So it was such a, a, a really unfortunate way to start the year. But first of all, uh, the position is now such that black has to be sensible and accept that he's not going to win this. But no, no, I, I, I keep going on. But let's say what went wrong. Black to play, play 
Keep these up, I think. Or did I? What did I play? Anyway, come on. Uh, yeah, this, this is what we need already. And we've got another situation. We notice this 3 to 2 majority on the king side. Well, white. Uh, white's king is very close. And black's king, although it's not tied down in the same way it was in the pre match, it is distant. It's absent from where the action is. And you can't do much about white's play on this wing. So I played g5, still confidently thinking I was doing all right. My opponent played king f3, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Should we see if they can work out? Okay, let's just go back. Let's, let's just go back a, a move. Uh, one move back, please. Yeah, in this position, black should just play king d7, king e7, king f7, and they just sit on the position and, and accept that a draw is all that he's going to achieve. Okay. So just keep things solid and make it very difficult for the white king to invade to the black position. In fact, white shouldn't be able to, to invade either. So it's a position which should, should really lead to a draw. If black just keeps it nice and tidy in the back. Sometimes when you're making a radical decision, you need to know if you are you risking something. Do you have the draw in hand or not? And this is another key moment. It's all very well still wanting to play for a win. But if you are taking a big risk, like a whole point risk, then you need to really reflect on it properly and make sure you're calculating properly. Because I didn't do that here. I've learned from the experience and I feel better for it. Anyway, that's all. So, yeah, I put the king on f7 and white can't really that So, black played g5. I've got a majority. I'm going to push it. King f3. Threatening King G4 with some sort of invasion coming up. So H5 to stop the invasion. Right. Now all I need to do is bring my king to G6 and F5. If the black, if we place the king on, on F5, the black king on F5, black would be winning you know, easy. But unfortunately, it does, it's a bit of a long way from that. <laughs> now I played very strong. So should we see if they find a good position? Go on. Can you see what, what's going to happen over the next couple of moves then? So we've got a few suggestions of H4 now. I've got Harry, Joseph and Kenneth saying in theory. Yeah, it's, it's H4. I mean, H4 is going to be, if, if White doesn't play H4 and just wait, well then he can't really make any other progress. It's the only rule from breaking the position. And Black can trundle his king around the houses, eventually getting to F5. So H4 was indeed played, so well, well done. Well, I've got to take it. I can't. I can't let it, my opponent take it. So. And this is what blew me. Is that what threw me and blew me was that uh, um, I was expecting King takes F4 when I went into all this sequence. And now my opponent's can't play King G2, as I noticed Kenneth has mentioned. Oh, so King G2. And we notice that's how I've gone King G2. Uh, always expect the unexpected, I think we can say. Hold on a second, let's count pawns. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah, Black's uh, three pawns up. The yeah. Black's lost in this position. And you see, I, I, I threw away a, you know, a very good, favourable position. And uh, I, I went into the pawn ending at the wrong moment. The transitional moment where you actually exchange pieces to go off into the pawn ending is often the key moment of the game. And a lot of juniors go along pawn endings because they go into pawn endings where they shouldn't really. They don't realise that the pawn ending is not in their favour. They, they go into a pawn ending, and it's actually, when somebody's got an advantage in a pawn ending, they're the easiest endings of all to win. So this position is actually winning for white, because white's got the better king. So let's play through the remaining moves. So Can I ask a quick question? So if, if white plays king takes f4 now, what's the result? Well, uh, I think black's all right because black's got time, king d7. And then white's got to go around the houses anyway with king f3. He can't go king g5 because he's outside the square of the h4. Yeah. He comes back, king e7, yeah. g2, king here. The black king's getting there, king here, king here, king takes four. Well, and king f5. <laughs> you're not worse. You know, you, you can also try king h6 but you know you're certainly not worse in that position and uh, you know but you might have winning chances for black as well so that was what i was hoping for but you know there i was blind to my opponent's cunning move king g2 and 
okay, well, black can't really protect his pawns. The, the, the pawns are all falling like ripe apples, which you may have heard. <laughs> the, you know, king takes pawn. Your king is still incredibly weak. It just can't get into the game. It would love to be over on d5. Yeah, yeah. So I thought, well, okay, I'll play f3 here. Hopefully my opponent will chase after it and give me some hope. But my opponent just played king h6, which I think was a... And basically showing that the fact that the white wins the e6 pawn by force. We've already seen this sort of manoeuvring around. Black just has to basically give ground with every move, and then white eventually takes the e6 pawn. That was not one of my uh, favourite pawn endings, but it's very instructive, and we can learn from it. And you can, you know, it's a good idea sometimes when things go wrong. Learn to laugh at yourself. Was that, you know, okay, you, you might cry or whatever you do, get upset when you lose again. But learn to laugh at yourself. Learn the lesson, accept that we human, we make mistakes, try and do better next time. Yeah, I think that's a really, really good move, King G2. And don't you no, no, I, 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 I've completely overlooked it when I went into it. You know, I thought I was being clever, but my opponent was being more clever. Than me. Don't assume your opponent's going to make the obvious move. Okay, my opponent swindled me, but it, 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 it's, a, it's a girl, she's quite a young girl. Actually, and um, um, maybe um, a few months earlier, I was the captain of the French ladies team, and in the match of Indonesia against the French, she was completely lost to swindle the French girl. So I remember she was a good swindler, but eventually I, <laughs> I learned it to my own cost as well, not just the team's cost. Anyway, let's go to the next one. Okay. Next one is the situation I really want to, to mention. I think this is quite important. And that is when we're playing um, our games, always be aware of the possibility of transposing into, um, uh, or should I say, simplifying into a pawn ending. Because in your pawn ending, so when somebody's got an advantage, very difficult to, to, to defend. So then, thanks, um, your signal's gone a bit bad again. So um, yeah, Glenn was just saying, um, always be aware of transposing into King and Pawn End games. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, here's the, the case. Uh, can you still can you hear me now? Um, yeah, a bit. It's, it's got quite bad, but it doesn't matter. We'll um, we'll we'll carry on. I'll just do quite a bit of talking as well. So in this position, um, that moves the the knight to h5, and maybe we should ask the class. So should we take that knight or should we not take that knight? What to play? And um, give me some moves. Don't just give me yes or no. Glenn's white in this game. And this is this is a very nice thing game. I really enjoyed playing through this before the lesson. The white to play. The more you can calculate, the better. Because I think King and Pawn end games are based on pure calculation. And if you get them wrong, the game just goes wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, as we saw in the previous case. Yeah. But um, we can use uh, calculation. Um, and we need to use calculation. Whatever principles you learn, the calculation is very important in pawn endings. So sometimes you can calculate a long way into the game in pawn endings. So it's a very good way of testing and also challenging you and perhaps developing your calculating abilities. But um, general principles also play a role as well. And here is a general principle which we can look at. It is this pawn on B2, B4. It's what we call, uh, it's a pass pawn, but it's what we call an outside pass pawn. And it's a long way from what's happening on the rest of the board. And in a pawn ending, we can just think about it. The black king, in order to defend this position, has to um, be preoccupied with the B pawn. So at some point, it, it, it'll have to stay somewhere around about the B file, while that B pawn is threatening. And at some point, the white king will rush across to the other side of the board and hopefully get there first. But there's a good chance he'll get there first because in many such situations, the person who's got the pawn on the pass pawn on the outside, the outside pass pawn, has the advantage. Let's see, let's see how it uh, went out. First of all, we can have a look at one or two of your suggestions. Yeah, so we've had some, sorry, Dan, um, your, your noises are very good, so I'll, I'll just try and... Um... Makes shout out. And <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, we've had some good suggestions here. So, one, Kenneth wants to go bishop e2, but the majority of people want to go bishop takes knight, which is indeed the best move, but you have to work it out because it's a complicated king and pawn game. So, Theo's written quite a lot of detail here. Uh, pawn takes, he's written king b3, um, and then he's given f6, king c3. I'm, um, 
I suppose I could play, I'll play this out actually. And, um, so um, he said king b3, f6, and then king c3, e5, f takes e5, um, and he said that white has the outside pass pawn here. So um, I'll let, we'll talk about that in a moment, but that's that's quite good. Um, okay, well, obviously something similar happened in the game. Yeah. So you're on along the, the right lines. You could throw in bishop e2, e2 check first to, to push back the king and then capture. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. Yeah, maybe that was your idea, Kenneth, was it throw bishop e2 and then push <laughs> Okay. Yeah, just try and get a better version of bishop takes I, mean, I think that's a reason. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's what he said. He said king c6 and then bishop takes knight. So yeah, well done, Kenneth. That, that's a good idea. Um, okay. So let's, let's go okay, let's just go through the game then. So I'll just go back here. So this was um, knight h5. And it's got a double question mark. So um, the knight. Um, yeah, yeah, we can. We'll have a look at um, knight eight afterwards. Let's look at the pawn ending first. Yeah, and in this position, I, I played a subtle move. I didn't play king b three. I played something else. I played h four, and I think this is a useful move to take into consideration. H four, because oh, first of all, I'm, I'm fixing their pawns, and I've given myself a reserve tempo with g three. Something we discussed about a little bit about earlier. So if white plays h four. We can play the move perhaps. Yeah, um, yeah, so um Charlie got this right when he was doing his calculation. So well done, Charlie. Um so the fact that you've got this G3 move could be useful. So F6, it's white to play. Yeah. King B3, E5, takes, takes, King C3, black to play. And now, um, let's let them have a think. <laughs> yeah, what we should we play here? Play, maybe tell us in the chat. What should white play in this position? Tell us privately in the chat, please. few suggestions slow down do some calculating don't rush that's something glenn used to always say to me when i was younger don't force the issue <laughs> so we've got we've got some king d4s we've got one king g3 we've got one king b3 um so just give you a bit more time to work out your move and then we'll go for it so white to play it's always good to re, uh, refresh the brain. King D4, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, perhaps we should uh, we should go through it now and see. Okay. What we have. Yeah. So King D4 is a reasonable move. It's perhaps not the only move. I think G3 is a reasonable move as yeah. well. Yeah. G3 is good as well. Takes King here, and you know, obviously, it's a sort of race situation. Um, Black at some point would like to come around the back. No, it doesn't look that promising, does it? Yeah, that um, King F6 is good. It's a shouldering move, as Carlston Muller likes to call it, a body check. So you're just shutting the king out and from getting where it wants to go. So that's very important. And then it's game over now, because like Dan said, we're just going to eat these pawns and get a queen. Yeah, I suppose Black could try some counter but he's going to be a little bit slow. Yeah, so I won the game like that. But the thing is, in the, in the initial position, if we go back to initial position with the knight on f6, black doesn't have to go into the pawn. It's not something like uh, there's no alternative that makes any sense. 
he could just play the position of the bishop against knight. And the knight um, is not such a bad piece here. Um, the bishop can operate a little bit easier on both wings, perhaps. But let's have a look at what black can do. Just play one or two more moves. See, black can set up this barrier of pawns with the pawns on e6, f6, and g6, and the white king can't really invade very easily. And, you know, I think black's got pretty good drawing chances here. I mean, I think it might be a shade easier for white, but I don't think black should have that, that much to worry about if, he, if he's very really careful. Naturally, you have to watch out for one or two of your pawns being stuck on the same color as the bishop, but not easy to break through here. So this is what my opponent should have done. And I think we can say that perhaps white has a small advantage, but it's it's um, a lot of uh, difficult uh, work to do if to have a chance of winning this position. Yeah, I mean, maybe um, he just assumed that after this, it was an easy draw um, because of the e pawn. Yeah, to create a, a, another passport on, uh, on the e file to compensate, to balance out the people. But in those cases, the outside passport is the stronger one. Yeah. My opponent underestimated that. Now, my opponent, I can't remember his rating, 2000 or something like that, maybe, maybe a little bit stronger, but, you know, he, he, he misjudged it and he had plenty of time on the clock. So easy to go wrong at that moment of transition into um, a pawn ending. So that's something we, we, you need to take into account in your Yeah, you make a good point there before the break. So, like, if you're at the end of the game, you're obviously going to be quite tired because you've been playing for a long time and there's no point rushing and thinking, oh, it's an easy draw because um, players like Glenn, they don't worry about the result. He was probably thinking, right, I'll just keep playing and I'll eventually wear my opponent down. And that's what happened. You know, your opponent's probably going to go wrong at some point. And um, players often say, well, I couldn't do that because I wanted to, I didn't want to draw with a player because they had a lower rating and all this sort of thing. You've just got to play good moves. And if you're playing a weaker player, they will go wrong at some point. Um, and if they don't go wrong, well, fair enough, they get a draw against you. But Maybe they're not so weak then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, so, uh, we see, that's an interesting point that Sarah pointed out, because uh, uh, on the previous one of these, it was Keith Arkell's back, and he, he's well known for that sort of technique. He doesn't try and force the issue too early. He just keeps putting his pieces on good squares and uh, putting his pawns on the right squares, taking into account general considerations, playing good, sensible, practical moves. And he finds that easier to do than a player that has less experience. And that's why uh, he often wins the draw and end games. Because people it's think, yeah, people think, well, we had a lesson with um, Keith a couple of weeks ago, but um, people think, oh, it's really, really easy. It's an easy draw. But they don't realise that Keith's just going to grind, grind, grind until until it's a win. And, he, you know, he normally does win because, you know, his opponent thinks, oh, it's an easy draw and relaxes and then, and then things go wrong. So um, yeah, don't don't assume a result until you've got that result because these end games are very very complicated. And as Glenn showed, even he doesn't understand everything, and he's written books on end games. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the point so, is, we use certain general principles, but you still have to calculate. And there's quite a lot of calculating. In fact, there's less pieces on the board, but there's more calculation to do in a pawn ending. In many cases, there is, there isn't a middle game, which may come as a surprise to you. Yeah, I'll admit, I find them very scary in games because, um, you know, if they, they go wrong, you just lose. It's an easy loss. <laughs> yeah. Whereas that you can get back into the game in the middle game. Yeah, and this is a, this is a good point. It's worth reiterate. Well, um, there are some other examples. Well, we might have a chance to look at those uh, later on. But you're going to have a break and you're going to have a chance to test your own skills against one of your colleagues very shortly. Yeah, just explain. Trying to sort out Glenn's problem with the background noise in the break. So apologies for that, but you've all been managing pretty well and it's not been too bad. Um, so um, Glenn's got a really good position. You're going to play it out against somebody at a similar level in the group. And then Glenn's going to go through and make some comments on the games. So we're going to do that after the break. So if you come back at 11.15, just, um, yeah, just come back at 11.15 and we'll get going with that. So, um, yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, we'll stay and we'll try and sort out this problem with the background. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. It's very unlucky. It's very close to a draw that, uh, you know, I think your opponent was just a little bit too vigilant. But well done, both of you, for taking the time. And, you know, you, you learn more when you, when you play in games. 
where you're actually taking a little bit of time to play them out because the fact that you've had a, a trying to work out the, the best play at the ball means that uh, you know there's more to benefit from it in the uh, in the long term. Yeah, definitely. So um, this is the last one that's going on, and then we'll we'll go through all the games and Brent can give his expert advice. So we'll watch this to the end, and then we'll go through. And hopefully, I mean, I know some people have managed to get okay, they're on their third game, but hopefully you really understand the position now. Because I found it really hard to understand. I played two games against Stockfish Shape, which were draws, and then and then I beat it. <laughs> But obviously, I didn't look at the engine or anything. I just tried to work out from what I did wrong, why it was turning out a draw. And it's very yeah, Getting more links. This is good for people in are in these positions. And let's watch Theo against Aaron. It's good to see you're taking your time. Yeah, I was this um I think this was what I had against Stockfish where it was really important when you played F4. Yeah. G4. <laughs> Position's got me thinking. A bit faint, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the problem for black is the king's stock. Ooh. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good move. It's over now. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know. Okay, that's not sure. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I, I was a bit optimistic. Oh, that looks like an impressive final position. Yeah. I, I do think anyone's still playing, so we could start. Um, we could start. Um, yeah, by going through um those get games that um Dangerous Kid and Theo played. So let's start with them, and then we'll go through because I think that was really important. Um, yeah, Glenn, um, I don't know if hopefully it's all right, but I was struggling to hear what you were saying. So um, maybe if it's, okay, it's not very clear, yeah. I'm afraid. Um, can hardly hear you. Are you guys having problems hearing him or is it just me? Just let me know. Um, yeah, it seems to have got worse. There's no background noise now, but I can't really, I can't really hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, brilliant. So let, let me get Theo and um, uh, and Aaron to um, unmute themselves and they can talk about the games that they played and we can go through them. So I think that would be really helpful. And we'll do this for everyone. So just try, try and listen, even if it's not your turn. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to say. Um, dangerous kids, Kenneth, sorry. <laughs> I have to, uh, sorry, Aaron. Um, you no, know, everyone's Lee chess names and everyone's normal names, right? Okay, I'll start again. So we need um, Theo and Kenneth. So where are we? Kenneth, you should be able to speak now. And Theo as well. Just You should be able to unmute yourselves now as we go through these games. Okay. I think I'm unmuted, right? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. So um, I think you guys played three games, um, but obviously I think... We all looked at the first game, uh, the last game. So do you want to talk about this game? And Glenn's going to give his comments as well. So, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure White just has the upper hand, and I'm pretty sure White's just winning. So I was going to try and mix it up by just pushing my H pawn, and maybe if I can trade enough pawns off, then I can draw. I think I'm going to do this again. So, I think that's a good practice to So, King F8, well, the H4 is going to be loose at least. So, uh, H5 is not a good thing to start. Yeah, so King F8, H5. If King F6, then King G8, you're going to have to make a decision soon anyway. Yeah, so King F6, um, what's the point? King G8, what? I played King F6 in the first game and lost, so I thought I'd try and do. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, um, you 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 criticise H5, but um, maybe maybe King F6 is slightly more precise. But the the idea of H5 is. Yeah, I think, yeah, I should have played H4 here. Now this is a good point. I think White should play H4. Yeah. Because in a way you, you're fixing the black pawns and you've got a target which you know how to get at, whereas well you know where it's going to be. Whereas if the black pawn gets to H4, I think it becomes a bit more difficult to, to break it out. So that's quite a good comment. Uh, Blunder is a bit strong, but that's I think H4 I think is. I need to ask comments, but I'll ignore them. Yeah. Yeah. H4 very nice. Yeah, I think that's a good idea because now it's not so easy for white to get to that point. So what happened next? So F4 was played, and I think I think that's an interesting move. It's an interesting move, but obviously now you need to start calculating here. It might not be totally So King F5, King takes F7, G5. King F5, King takes G5. Yeah, you can, you can play G5. I was going to suggest... Um, H3, I guess, but not G5. Yeah, I was, I was planning. That was my plan when I pushed to uh, H4 in some position. Uh, yeah, I like the idea of H3, but not immediately. I'll show you where I'm missing. Uh, I'll go... Okay, I'll go G5. Yeah, I'll go G5. Okay. Yeah, I'll go G5. 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 Yeah, I'll go
And then G5, I think. Yeah, I see. Yeah, you can go that. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's take that complicated, but I think, yeah, I think this is a draw. And then, because I, I, my king to f3, g2, takes h2, and king h1, h2, yeah. and forced draw. Yeah, okay, well, that just counts. So, so, when we go back to the position where uh, on 2g5, yeah, I don't want to look at that, I want to look at the position with h4, so q h4. You want this? So, when I play h5, uh, I can't work out the notes, they're all the same colour as the, uh, the main words, so it's a bit funny. So, I don't know what that is, but it's not, it's not, it's not, sorry. I'm struggling to hear you, Glenn. I don't know if anyone else. Right. Yeah, Glenn. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Black played H5. Yeah. Now, you notice that black has that additional idea of counterplay. So if white plays H4 here, we stop the black H4 getting too far up the board. So I think H4 is a good practical move for, for white to play here because we noticed that drawing resource when we were analysing the previous one. So when you made the, the comment that H4 is best, then I think that's the, the right comment. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, thanks for that, Glenn. So, um, yeah, so I think the way that the game went, um, yeah, I mean, this I had a game like this against Stockfish. Well, this is the, this is the position of the This is the winning. You have to tie an F4 in front of This is the best moment. So well done if you have that in your game. Then in your comments saying is he not quite a friend? Yeah, he is if he finds that giant. Yeah. If he doesn't find that giant, it's not too easy. This is the moment before you are ready. So look, what happens if you uh, yeah, okay, you could have taken on Passon, but okay, but what happens if you take on Passon? Never mind. After age three. King e7, not rather than f5. King e7, maybe you can. So, I thought f5, then um, I'm threatening to play f takes g4, yeah. but he plays g5, which is a good move. Yeah, that's that was pretty unfortunate. Yeah. yeah, that was a really good move the air play and lodging, and then yeah, that's right. So, that, that one's easy to be quite good. By the way, remember what I played d4? Sorry, I'm not sure. I can't follow this. So, so I might play G4. Okay, yeah, okay. I see G4. Can we take on Pass on? Uh, instead of King E6, you mean? Yeah, after G4. G4, yes. take on Pass on. For the defender, for the defender, often exchanging pawns is a, is a good way to try. King E6, G4. Yeah, I was thinking about this. Let's have a look at that field because I think that's quite useful. And now King E7. And F5. Yeah, this is quite interesting. But now Black has got a resource and G5. Yeah. You see, this is what I was thinking about. Because F6, White loses. So, I know but, White doesn't lose. No, no, no. no okay. But, white loses. That's but, not so fair. Uh, That's a draw. That's a draw. King G8. Yeah, this is a key moment. Yeah. This would have. <laughs> This That's quite pretty, game. yeah. And this is transposing to an analysis of Botvinnik from many years ago, that I remember. Yeah, <laughs> so so quite impressive. We managed to find that, yeah. So that is yeah. That's good. You King E8, you've got F6, and after King F6, I get squeezed, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. squeeze so we talked about with Keith. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that. so that was definitely worth looking at, although it doesn't seem to defend the game, yeah. So, so if we go back to the position where White played G4. Uh, yes. Uh, B4. Where are we? So many variations. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Okay. One last try is to get Black to play H3. And Black try H3, is that, is that realistic or not? But F5? Okay, F5. And now I think I have to try... I have to try G4 I'm going to feel it. So now you play with G8. Now King E7. But now we yeah. could go for King H6. King F2, King H6. Oh, well, you found an alternative way. Yeah, I think that's what you like. You know, we two points. So it's okay. Yes, yeah, so that's the three win as well. See, the fact that White's King is deep in the heart of Blank's account means that he's got more. Blank's account is very hard to achieve. 
So basically, Wright is a big position for that here. So I think that really sums up the, the difficulties here. King G8 is strong. King H6 may be an alternative way to win as well. So that well done. Yeah. I think, I think those are pretty good games, you two. So, um, yeah, good quality. I think, I think by the time you've got to the third game, you've really understood quite a lot of the, uh, the aspects of it. Perhaps we should look at somebody else's game. Yeah, definitely. We're going to get back. I think you did quite well. That's a dramatic final position. So, let's go now with um, Charlie and Aaron. And yeah. I'll just make it so you can speak. Um, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm everyone, so don't worry. Um, Charlie, you should be able to speak now, and Aaron, you should be able to speak as well. Um, I think yeah. this first game, so it might be um, best to go with the last game, but it's, it's up to you guys. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Get control of the G7 square, but rather than the castle time, you get control of the G7 square. And then you, in the heart of the black horns, you're creating problems. In the air, it looks like you're, you're not quite sure what to do. For something to tell you. Yeah, I wasn't really sure what I was supposed to do. Yeah, G8 is quite a good bit because your opponent doesn't have the G6 square for his king. So you're definitely going to be able to get some sort of uh, pressure against the king uh, The king is going to actually just repeat with the king six and hope that, you know, he, why does it come up with something more dynamic? The g5, king d7, I think I would have got king e6. So king, king d7. Now, um, um, you might, uh, in this position, there would be a chance to draw this position by leaving the king where it's maybe playing h5 for black. Maybe quite a nice little structure. You know, if, if, you know, at the moment, the white king can't do a great deal. Yeah, it feels to me like the king was in the heart of black's pawn, but now the king's kind of moved offside. Yeah, it's, I think black's got increased drawing chances here. I mean, obviously, the white king is still a bit more active, but black can perhaps get his king to squares like g6 and g7 and try to defend all his pawns at once. And it might be hard for white to break through here, I think. So perhaps that's what you should have done as black. But when black moves his king, the white king on e7 is suddenly starting to create some threats. I wasn't thinking this game, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, re, like, I, I was distracted by um by something. But we played we played two games after they were much like better. But yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, what tends to happen is that we learn from experience, and maybe the quality of the games went up in a number of the encounters. And we've come across. Yeah, I think I've got another one open here. Here we go. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this this. There's yeah, still that fine position. Oh, you're right. We've got the uh, um, flipped position, so you have to get used to that. Everyone who's uh, following it in the, in the flipped format. And now King G8. Yeah, this is a better move. H5 is a good move, but now H4 is probably the best move. Right. To which we, we we came across that conclusion because it, it reduces yeah. the possibility of black in counterplay with an advanced H4. So King H7, and now maybe maybe Black should try H4 there. So I, was thinking, I was thinking King E6, King F5. Uh, so it's uh, like if he went H, if he went H4. Yeah. So so sorry. If, if instead of King H7, if he went H4. Yeah. I was thinking of um of going King E6. Yeah. And okay. kind of just locking him in, but also oh, allowing my to move. King E7. What do you mean by locking him in? Oh, two. No, that's not a good move. <laughs> well, oh. and, now, and now White's got this plan of advancing the F4. This is, this, is the, this is the winning plan. And now you advance the F4. But the best move is actually F3 here because the timing's right. So let's have a look how that works. Yeah, just I learned that when I was playing Stockfish. So you, you have yeah, to. Yeah, King E6. King E6. It's now F4. And now we've got a very difficult choice. If he goes to King F5, F5, F5 you start probably born to the you end up with a winning one versus the other. So let's have a look at that. Oh, do you want to keep that mind open? Yeah, this might as well play it out. King, I don't know, King takes. Why did you go to G4? Why did you teleport? 
Wait, in, instead of instead of king g4 there, why don't you just king take and then, and then takes and then king g4? Yeah, yeah, king takes, g4. And I've got a nice move, g3. g3, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the extra pole game in here, it's small. Yes. <laughs> so after king takes, king takes, and then, and then white's, white's king is, is helping to support the advance of the pawn and black king. King can't do around. So after King of Four, King G6 is winning. So going back a few moments, yeah, that's uh, that's right, mm. exactly that's the way the arrow needs to go. So in this position, if that goes King E7, I've well, got this move there. So there's, there's an the G6 pawn stroke square. So black takes, and now White's got this move King E6. Yeah. So yeah. something like. Uh, what the move is here. Let's go to e6. I'll, I'll try and be clever. King takes h5. King six. And this is still looking for 100%. Yeah. White goes king h6. And white's pawn and his superior king are able to win this game. Yeah, but this is this isn't good because my only good move is f4, but then yeah, then he just pushes his pawn to h5 and then I'm yeah. just six one. So this is what I did in this one. And so that's interesting. But let's go, yeah, that's winning. So that's quite interesting. Let's go back to the game. Let's see what we can learn from the game as well. Okay. So, um, it's, interesting. it's interesting that you came around to feeling that, that that was the conclusion. So KF5 trying to... Alicia, I think we've been playing sometimes with the variations, but I think this was the game, wasn't it? So... Yeah, I think I'm not sure this is winning for white, but it's interesting. There are still chances maybe to break up the points. So black needs to be on his guard, doesn't he? Um, maybe something like. I'm not sure if that's good or not. What happens in the game? Uh, king F4. Okay, well, that's a good deal. King E6. Yeah, now, yeah, maybe King E5. F5, I think uh, he gets squeezed with King F6. But that king has got maybe that's good. But after King E5, um, you've got more than one square to defend the F4. So, what were you saying there, Glenn? Sorry, sir. I place key F6 or something like that. I'm like, that's probably going to be He hasn't got a good move. I suppose he can find G4. Yeah, because I, I, you know what you were saying earlier about um, when you think you, you're winning a position, you, you go a bit silly, and I thought this was winning for black. So oh, I, I basically you... played for the win and tried to avoid all drawing and then realised that I was now lost, oh, which is serious. exactly the same as your game. You know, one of these natural-born optimists, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so what, 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 what's happened in this game then? Because I'm interested. Do you want to go King G6? Let's have a, let's have a look. So... um. Wait, was this, oh, sorry. Oh, you've got to try G4. Well, I didn't know what to do, yeah. G4. Yeah, yeah but you, you can see that now there's trouble, I uh, think, because this is very not so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can take as well, but F3 is as good as anything. Yeah, that's winning. Yeah, I was hoping you'd take, and then I could maybe get some sort of draw with the doubled pawns, but... Mm. Well, I think it would be winning anyway, because I'd yeah, have yeah, to get yeah, yeah, another one in there. So yeah. that variation we saw earlier, with uh, going back to move nine, you know, six to g four, that's what looks quite interesting. Move nine, so yeah. Uh, no, um, this yeah. So that's actually a good move between h five. It might work king f six and then g four. It's a bit more tricky, but after king h five, you find another good square to put pressure on g five. Now, black doesn't have a pass move with this king. Black's in six right here. And you know, obviously, so that would be the best choice in the king h5. But I think you have chances to hold if you if you have that pawn structure h4, g5, f6, and then just pass that with the boys with the black king. 
uh, like accepting that the draw is the best he's likely to get. Yeah. So, uh, you know, sometimes we have to, to come around to uh, facing up to uh, some home truths that we're not going to win a game, we just have to try and do our best to uh, get a draw. Yeah, that's good. Let's, let's move on so we can get through everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, let's look at another one again. Okay. Well, so... yeah, it's just interesting to go through it afterwards. Yeah, let's go through uh, this game. It looks like one winning 15 moves or something. So how did you do that? Harry, so, yeah. so I'll just make it so they can speak. Um, Harry always gets excited about being allowed to speak. It looks like you've played it out quite a few times. Yeah. You're, you're pretty nippy if you manage to play 11 games at that time. So, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations about the speed, but uh, sometimes the quality goes down a bit when you're doing when you're playing a bit too fast. So King F6, F4 is a bit committal, and King G G8 is the right move. But go on F4, yeah. And then Black played H5, which I like. H3, uh, I'm not sure I like that move. Maybe now. Maybe maybe now black should try H4. No, no, when white plays H3 on move three, in this particular position, instead of king E6, maybe H4. Ah. Yeah, yeah, instead of king E6. I need to move king to analysis mode or something, instead of king E6. Analysis mode. Uh... <laughs> um, so <laughs> okay, yeah, so um, what position do you want? H3, H3, yeah, yeah, sure. And in this position, I think that if it plays H4, it's quite interesting because we've already seen that. The advanced stage form with that, a bit of a natural thing to come up with. You've also got this uh, other aspect on that, um, the left form is now easy to get out. Um, I think it's a good one or not, but it's an idea. And if anybody uh, mm -hmm. in this sort of position, this looks, this looks as if uh, it might create a few more difficulties for white. Yeah, because, um, because when you break up the pawns, you know, maybe the white king isn't just going to make trouble. Anyway, what happened in the game? Yeah, Harry went king g7. Uh, right. Yeah. Black played h5. Yeah. Yeah. Black played king g6. White played king g7. And now you've got this possible uh, possibility of playing f5. Yeah, Harry, did you understand that, that one? Then was talking about f5. Yeah. 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 Or to mix it a little bit, it's still quite Maybe a five is So, what happened in the game? Um, so, went G4. Right. What do you think that this is not easy for black either? Yeah. Takes, takes. Yeah, and it looks like this might be a win for white. It's quite interesting that a position like this can be a win with G5. Isn't this a good well, that's my good draw, yeah. No, why needs to go behind actually King F8? Yeah, I think five it could take eight takes and it's a draw. But King F8 might be 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 the win here. Yeah. Now King G8. Because black doesn't have the G6 square. And now you play. What do you play? That's a good question. You've got to get this one right. I mean, I'm, I'm assisted by the um... Stockfish saying it's a draw now, so <laughs> it is. It is. I think I've gone wrong. But yeah, I think that's good. So, <laughs> if we, yeah, if we go back to this position. This is um because I had, I had this against Alex and we were playing out, and it is just a draw because um. <laughs> should we have a? <laughs> Curious to see what. How did you win this, Harry? <laughs> uh, yeah, he blundered. I think he blundered. Right, well, we'll um, look at the blunder in a second. Let me just go back to the one with not the Yeah, I can't hear you very well. Yeah. 
Okay, go back one. Okay. Well, that's fine, yeah. So, PD6. Uh, PD6, yeah. King F8. Yeah. King F6. Right. Now, what happens if you play G5 check at this point? King E6. And now, King G8. G8. Um. Oh, yeah. And now the problem, no, I said King E8, but then black had F6. So King G8, oh, sorry, yeah, I said King E8, but then F6 was interesting for that. So King G8, maybe this is not so easy to, to win. No, it doesn't look like it. No, no, go on, keep going, black to play. Maybe King E8 is holding, yeah. So this position is very close. It's like a borderline between a draw and a, a win. It's quite possible that um, if that is precise, it's really something he's drawing out of the So it, it just shows that it, it's quite uh, interesting for Black to exchange off the, the pawn with h d 4 gives him some drawing chances. Which brings us down to uh, the, the actual game. So, actually, uh, so how did he run down? Let's have a look at it. G5 was crazy again. Yeah, so it's, it, I think I think the position is 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 drawn now. And um, Harry, your move was to try and play f five um, here, but this yeah, if I'm not doing that, this is interesting. Yeah. So in this position, if you if you play instead of that, if you play king e eight, yeah. you've got to. It's like an opposition, but on the side. We can sometimes call it that on opposition. It's a the fancy name. And, and now why can't really make progress because you, you're basically shadowing what the other king's doing. If he goes king a7, you can go, oh, if you go back, please. Yeah. If I goes king a7, you can go king d7. Oh, no, no, king d7, please. Are we sure? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Can, I go, can I go king d7, please? Yeah, and now you just copy what your opponent does. King h6. Yeah, can you just copy, copy the king g7, now king e7. And he might, he might just be just be a draw because because you keep your position almost in permanent. But when you're thinking you see, Mark is going to go around the back and then you got it was a draw. But let's have a look at that. So you can still finish. Uh, so okay. what happens in the game? What happens in the game? Because why one quite quickly? Yeah, I'm looking at their clocks, they spent like not very much time at all, but as that's it, yeah. So um, it looked like um, it was a mistake to try and go too active at the point. You have to really not play that well when you're trying to go active. Make sure you're not giving your opponent additional possibilities. And in this case, you could have kept your position. So it's, you know, something we can learn from. One question I should perhaps ask you is that um, maybe you're playing a bit too quickly. When you're, when you're playing this five minutes plus five seconds, obviously you can't go to sleep on the position, but you've still got enough time to, to think for, for five to 15 seconds from time to time. You don't have to play all your moves almost um, at tempo, as I say, immediately. So that's just something to bear in mind. Yeah, definitely. So now I'm just looking at the game from Fryan. He played against Alex because we had an odd number. Um, yes, please. Yeah, quite a good time. So, Let's just get through this. So, um, I'll, uh, G4 here. Okay, G4, uh, may you give up a target for counter. Um, we've, we've come across the fact that G8 seems to be the squeeze of the guy, seems to be the right way. So, G5, so King here, and now maybe King G6. That's going to be hard work to break through. <laughs> now I'm just going for the win. Black's playing ambitiously. Most PF6 may, may already have kept uh, the, um, the situation uh, more difficult. You see how it's a bit easier for Black now? He's got this bit more room for his king on with King G6. That might have been better for, for White to play King G8 to stop the Black team getting to, to that square. And, and now Black's the one with the active king. Um, you know, it's still, you know, some of these games where you're really a little bit careful. White's going um, to go on him. Uh, oh, I think I'm not doing a mistake. I think he needs five was the mistake. 
Yeah, I mean, I think the. Um, I can't. You go back. Oh, yeah, through just too far. Let me just go back a couple of minutes, please, now. A whole lot. Because this is interesting here. I think Ken White's still with all, because it looks like suddenly made a break. So, and you notice how I'm playing this move G4 has left all sorts of holes in the white pawn structure, so I can try and exploit them as well. So let's have a look how this goes. What I'm going to get? King H6, yeah. Well, that's Ryan. You can speak if you want to say anything. Um, yeah, can you do six? Why is King locked out? That's the problem, and that's got a yeah, problem. Yeah, we're still in the G point, so we've got to be a bit careful. Go on, keep going. Yeah. H3, and now King G6. What? No, 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 King G6. King G6. What happens here? So King F4. Yeah. Which is a bit more than that. King F3. Oh, King F4. King H5, perhaps. King G4. No. Yeah, King H4. King F3. G5, and now you've got this. Oh, yeah. yeah, in there, I think. So that works, doesn't it? Just... Let's have a look. King takes. King yeah. takes, and now we've got a race. It's not really good, but it's probably best. Yeah. And White's losing, yeah. yeah. White's losing, yeah. White's losing. Yeah. yeah. So Brooke was able to get the initiative there. So when did F5 in the game move forward? Black played F5. Yeah, I think a G4 was probably the mistake from messing with okay, the right. So in this position, I think I should play F3. F3, okay. Yeah. I think it's still got, you know, a recent reasonable control on some key squares. We could not control the F5 square, then black has an assessment square, so it's just F4 and then G4. And it was a bit dangerous for white, and the white king started to look how to play well as the in the thick of the action. This, this might give chances. I mean, uh, this is my feeling that you know, might be chances. But the move to the four has set up to be points out. It's probably a mistake. So. Okay, brilliant. So um, now we'll look at um, Aaron um, against Kushal, and I'll just bring the analysis yeah. up. So, I mean, a lot of the same themes are occurring. Um, I think that tried something different. We have f 5 in G7 already white is winning a pawn. Winning a pawn is usually really good. So it looks like f 5 might have been a mistake. Yeah. See why we're very quickly. So probably best not to play f immediately, but uh, perhaps you learn from that in the, in the later games that you play. Uh, yeah, I'll have a look. I'll just make it so they can speak if they want to say anything. So, um, Kushal, you're unmuted now if you want to say anything, and Aaron as well. Yes, yeah, so I actually recognise that if I was not such a good player. Yeah. Uh, the best, best person is probably King F6, followed by H5. I mean, those are probably the two of them. Yeah, so I feel, um, yeah, you're breaking up a little bit, Glenn, but I think, um, yeah, I think so. What, what Glenn's saying here is we, we should have learnt by now um, the best ways to. From each side. Um, yeah, that's this is probably the best move. Eight five, I would say, is the second best move. Um, when you get to play eight five, it may be white's best chances to play eight four. And I think it's got very good winning chances. I think it's probably a win. Yeah. And it's interesting to know. Yeah, it looks like eight five is already considered a blunder by the. Um, on the, the browser. I mean, how long did you spend on playing a move like a five? Did you think of the question for you? Only you know within your heart how much concentration you have when you were thinking of five. Maybe you weren't quite warmed up yet. But... You were seconds. <laughs> already. Yeah, so you, you, you spend zero seconds, you've blundered, you lost already. If you do that in your own games when you're playing tournaments, uh, you would have a lot of accidents. So, something to think about for the future. A bit of concentration is, is required to, 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 to do this. Great. This, position, Great. This, this position is a draw if it is white. So, I'll just make it so they can unmute 
themselves. Cameron, you should be able to, and Joseph should be able to. So in this position, um, starting with King of Eight, I think that's six. Yeah. King of Six, yeah. The best move is King G8 to try and squeeze the, the um, uh, round the back. G3, I don't know, there might be some uh, life in it, but there might be a potential hold on F3 and H3, so you have to be a bit careful. It looks like you're just you're just making a move, hoping to black to commit himself. So th there is some merit in that as well. I think if we, if we go down the line, it's a look, position after white goes F4, and I was just trying to keep it there so I didn't want to move my king because then eventually I could move my king. Okay. Well, what Black's going to eventually move his king. I just don't like the fact that I would play F4 then G3 is going to be um, available. But let's see what happens. So now G4. Okay. So now well, Black has to move his king. Yeah, I've got king G6 maybe. Yeah, I was thinking, oh yeah, no, yeah. I thought in the game he might play king e5, but I've realised then that that's a terrible move, so. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Look at your fight! Yeah. Seconds. He's probably ahead on in the race, yeah. Okay, but I've got to look at this. F3 is interesting. Right. I think it's in the key moment. Um, I think all the white should probably be playing king e7 there, but h3, go on, h3. Uh, what's happening after h3? Um, are you, are you uh, squeezing him out of the box? This looks like a draw to me. Yeah, maybe you should take once and then play H5. Now H5. Yeah. That's a draw. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the white king is, is not participating in this, we, in this um, <laughs> serious exchanges. Me and Cameron played a game later, which was this exact position. It ended up with really it. It, it, a lot of it. I mean, we, we, we're almost the world experts in this, in this particular <laughs> position because this occurs so often. Yeah, and it's draw. Yeah. So it looks like pushing your own points a bit early is committing yourself, giving your opponent drawing chances. So that's why um, I ended up winning. In the notes, yeah, yeah, okay, but you should have taken on G4 in that position. Mm -hmm. In that particular position. H4 is the blunder. We already saw that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, uh, brilliant. Um, well, it's great to see So we should know now that White's best idea is H4. Now, I guess black can play F5, maybe. Yeah. I know. 
Maybe. Oh, no, because now King G6. Is that losing? That's a very interesting point. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's yeah, a, that's, that's a nice one. That's how it's. How do you draw this? For somebody who thinks it's a draw. This is similar to what happened in the game. Yeah, yeah it's very similar. The pawn takes king takes g5. You're going to win the other one as well. And black hasn't got the, the possibility of getting uh, the opposition in the right position. Well, well, we were a nice, nice to control that, which means that what black shouldn't try this defence. So can we go back a few moves, please? Yeah, let's go. Move uh, 10, move 10, king g6. Let's back to play king e7. Move 10, move 10. Why does that matter that that could be a draw? King eight, there's a <laughs> If you've got the opposition, you're going. Sometimes without the opposition, you can hold as well. But uh, one or two people with black uh, have lost because they've started to get a bit ambitious. They think, oh, maybe I've got winning chances as well. So it's a key moment. You're breaking up a bit there, Glenn. Um, I think I think here at King D six. Yeah, I think it's a draw as the yeah. chat. We just sat down to be King D one, just keeping opposition. King D six. And now King F seven is it, it looks good to me. Uh, so King D six. Yeah, King D six. Yeah. Yeah. This is the way. Yeah. Uh, this, this is always a very good one to know, everybody. The white king, you have to be a little bit careful how you play this one. But, you know, you, you may just have to go out there and uh, play with white. There's that little yeah, little. not a mistake. And king because of g6 is a draw, folks, but then it's so you correctly rectified your error before it's too late. You come to h6, and well done saying that. You know, you had to make it to this and this. That's something we should all remember. Oh, brilliant. Well, um, yeah, I think we managed to look at everyone's games. I think we, we've 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 all hopefully mastered the same game, which is a very an important end game because I think white's got the activity, which is the key theme. But you've got to be careful to tie black's pawns down so black can get the pawns rolling and get the king active. Then things could go wrong. But I think everyone um, understood what to do there. I mean, it's great games. Um, so yeah, thank, thanks for playing those out. I hope you learned lots from that. And thank you very much to. Glenn for going through everything with us and um, hopefully this has whet your appetite for some more king and pawn end games um Alex and I and Glenn have created like lots of um positions which we're going to send out to you this afternoon um so I mean you don't have to go through them this afternoon but if you want to have a look through them and try some of the positions we've set them up as octopus studies on Lee Chess, so you can have a go see if you get them right and um you know king and pawn end games are really important to master um, I think they're probably, well, I'd say they're impossible to master. Even Glenn makes mistakes. But um, I think to be good and comfortable with them and to be confident at having a go and get your calculation right is, is important because it's a common saying that just get into an end game against juniors and, and you'll win because juniors are bad at end games. But you guys are showing you're not. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thanks. Thanks very much for joining the lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. And like I said, we'll send the materials out to you this afternoon if you want to have a look at some more positions, which hopefully you do. And um, thank you very much to Glenn.